a one and one at the minute. Um, once you get into a potential third loss or a potential third win, that's when you will be playing those best of threes. So whilst these two teams are still looking for a second of either, they continue in the best of ones. So BDS versus Black Dragons. There's we've got Ying coming in as our first attacking man. Black Dragons did play this, let's not forget, a couple of days ago against Fear X where they lost seven and five. And I was really curious how the end of the band phase played out because it was border or console that BDS had a choice between. Border, they've lost recently. I think we saw them lose it just yesterday, actually, against W7M, an 8-7 banger between the two teams, but maybe didn't want to go to map those a little bit of intel on, whereas you look back at their last game on Consulate, it was over a month ago, so not a lot of recent history to go for Black Dragons, I think. So BDS are looking at the one and saying, right, where are they going to know the least about us and what map are we really comfortable on? Consulate for them is their second favourite map, so it does not surprise me at all. Docker being taken away, like I said earlier, BDS play a lot of this operator. Black Dragons don't really play it, so I think that's trying to hit off the three players on BDS that have Docker be in their top three. Legion being taken away mainly from Shaiko there as his primary played defender. And his army, I think, is going to surprise absolutely no one. In fact, Tim, we didn't see a whole lot of his army bans yesterday, and I think we saw her mm, capabilities in a very large number of rounds where she really slowed down a lot of attacks and created a lot of prompt for defenders. So seeing her taken away, it should mean the game flows a little bit more freely. Right, I love a bit of Consul. I'm really enjoying watching Consul lately. I said it the other day. Um, it's just plenty of... Uh, we're sort of starting to see that variation kick in. We're starting to see attackers figure it out a little bit more, which means defenders have, of course, got to adapt um, and got to... Try new things usually means getting out into the map more, taking a few risks, and we'll see whether that does sort of combine well with BDS's general playstyle or not. It's not something we would usually see too much of from them. Shaiko is going to be on the Valkyrie to begin with um, in round one. So defending down in basement, it makes perfect sense. You see him putting those cams in and around Piano, Exo, just looking to, again, get that vertical intel. We've got a couple of Nitros on side, him and Breedy could do some real damage from below and it's also just going to help prevent um, them taking confident control black dragons of that piano area and then using that verticality on site it's exactly that but of course the scrap around the main breach is one thing you're looking at here for me the reason why i'm saying that is because the thatcher is on side they want to make sure they can get through this wall otherwise you wouldn't see the thatcher coming along maybe even leaning towards micro emps in some cases however i can think of back in the stage all the way back throughout all of this year where teams have relied on the micro emps and frankly have messed it up they've got it in the wrong place or they've not really relied on the duration being as short as it was and therefore paid the price when all the electrics have come back online and destroyed the gadget so thatcher is always that safe bet if you just want to guarantee that you've at least going to find a way through a breached up wall which i imagine is what they'll be looking for here so keep a close eye on the main breach but for now there's a bit of a scattering out towards admin side as well where the jackal i expect is going to be our roma hunter that kind of is his role in the game so guto is going to be on Roma Hunter duty in this first round. We just see Hornet there taking out the first of those Nitros. Shaiko just trying a cheeky throw up through the yellow skylight. Hornet was ready and shoots it out of the sky. Also using that IQ scanner from up on the roof. It's a, a, a really good idea. There's a 20 meter range on that IQ scanner. So you're picking up the gadgets across multiple floors from the complete safety of the rooftop and just pinging those out. It's giving intel to your team in terms of who they're up against, but also where those gadgets are. Talking about where they are, Shaiko, he's going to get picked up. Ask finds him, no problem. Manages to get a nice entry for Black Dragons, and that is a great start for them. The Thatcher should mean the get in through the main breach, absolutely no problem. There's no way a Kaid should be being able to trick that. It should just be a simple case of two EMPs, get your breaching charges on, and it's job done. It's a classic thing about the beauty of Siege, right? Where there's the three floors that we play across here, and as you said earlier on, piano is going to be a big part of this. The round goes up to top floor, opens the floor to contest onto the first floor. And that's where they find Shaiko. It's like layers upon layers to even start getting any kind of pressure onto that downstairs. First means clearing out the first floor, which you can clear by going onto the second floor. Just again, a real beautiful thing that you don't really get a chance to see in many of the FPS titles out there on the market. However, that is only Shaiko down and offline. It's been about two minutes here. It's been a slow start for Black Dragons. As we mentioned, both teams are a little more conservative in their play style, generally pretty careful and cautious about the way they approach it. BDS with their roams, Black Dragons with their attacks here, going to meet that sort of criteria. That's taken offline by a C4, but it's going to come down to a bit of a flood of feel here, Tim, with only 40 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, very probably, like you say, BDS have... I don't know that it's BDS that have done a great job of wasting time here, or whether it's Black Dragons have just moved a little bit too slowly, but Nux does manage to find Breedy as oh, forced here. into wow. his path. This is absolutely stacked for a one-dimensional attack, and Solotov could end it all. He's going to come walking down Banana here. If they 
they are on a way. He's gonna catch them. He's gonna hit them hard. And that's exactly what he does. He knows there's a second. He finds it. So it's of the savior. It could be 10 seconds left to go. Diffusers down there. They don't have it. So it's off. Just needs to survive. Oh! He cannot make it four. It was so close to the perfect flank from Solotov. But Black Dragons just, just managed to hold on. Hornet winning out that close in 1v1 when he knew that he had about two or three seconds on the clock. You really fancied Solotov to win that out. Not had the strongest starts to the tournament so far, Solotov. I know, of course, when you really saw BDS uh, showing up yesterday, but not been one of the standout performers for them. And I'm glad that in that situation, he's walked forward and found a three. But if you're relying on a player to make a hero play like that, there are probably problems. And I was really concerned for Blood Dragons, being honest, and we had four of them all funneling down this single hallway where a smoke got dropped. And I was like, these guys are getting held back. They're going to run out to the clock here. And it was good intuition on their side to rotate players off towards the south side and start hitting kitchen side at the same time. Remarks, but sort of, that was almost the golden opportunity to close the round out. That's it, by stacking up like that, they, they very nearly got what they were asking for. And that was for somebody to hit them like that and get two or three kills quickly. And all of a sudden, a 4v2 becomes a 1v1. It's mm -hmm. not a situation you want to be facing. But all that aside, Black Dragons, they get the round over the line. And that's what it's about sometimes. You know, they're not always the cleanest. It can be a little bit messy. It can be a little bit chaotic. But so long as you get that one up on the scoreboard, that is all that you're really looking for. So Black Dragons this time will be attacking up onto the top floor. BDS deciding not to double down in the basement. Just having a look at the operators that they brought along. They've got the smoke for denial. I'm looking particularly towards the Monte and how they're going to deal with that. Um, Florio, of course, bringing the shield along this time. We've got Solotov on the air as well those Guzmot mines just being able to trigger that shield break at least on Monty so if they've got them positioned in the right place they might just be able to slow down that push from the shield how about that oh uh, that'll slow it down I mean it's the reverse of the last round right whereas last time it was attacking downwards now they're trying to strike upwards and being beat out by those above and you tend to say that those on the above have got the the advantage there they can dance around those very very close range vertical bars that stacks with the floor player downstairs, of course, has got a bit of a wider angle that he's got to be so cautious of. So really, it's always going to favor the player on the vertical in that case. And has to learn that very much firsthand. Florio being very cautious with his drone there, not wanting to give it away, just uh, wanting to really try and be as sure as he could that there was nobody in there before he actually sent the drone on in. Um, and that's going to allow now the Monte to enter on into admin. I think BDS are going to be quite happy to sort of defend this from, I won't say deep, but certainly from the vending corridor. They're going to be looking to just keep this Monte held at bay outside of meeting. I don't know whether there's going to need to be a little shift of utility. Maybe they were expecting a little bit of yellow stairs, but it seems for the time being they've got a good awareness of where this push is going to come from. They certainly will now as Solotov gets taken down from Copy. That's going to be Hornet finding the kill. Four versus four. As well as the last bullet that connected onto the head there as well. Like, oh, just siege timing moments. Everyone really groups up towards the admin side. They're really looking towards Florio here on the Monty to be the one that makes any kind of step forward. And the clock, again, is something I'm keeping an eye on. We've still got a couple of C4s to play to. We've still got smoke canisters. They've got to battle their way through. I do worry that leaving it this late brings it down to a similar end into the last round where it comes down to a, a critical couple of gunfights that play out, which is, is all well and good, but it kind of throws you back to the utility meta where it feels like rounds are so slow and it all becomes a bit of a flurry in the closing few seconds to see how it rounds out. Long Destiny now being taken over by the Monty as he's joined upon this spiral stairs and they've got rid of Shaiko. Not had the best start to this game. Now Shaiko just presents himself on a plate to Nux there. He's not to know that Nux has already ADS'd and watching that angle but it was one of the easiest skills he's going to have for the day. Four versus three now. 30 seconds left to go. Time as you said Des is going to be the factor but I don't think even that is too much of a concern. The Monte is looking to push in and potentially get a plant down. Those toxic babe canisters will deal oh, with him quickly oh, oh. and Florio just wasn't quick enough to get out because of the Banshee. Yep. It held him in the smoke it prevented him from leaving and that is a big blow now with only 10 seconds left to go Brede could potentially smoke this out is damage being done no. to Guto though no he's managed to avoid it the plant goes down BDS they're going to be wondering how does well a misplaced smoke is how Tim and you've got Hornet laying down just ready and waiting and sure enough finds his man now Brede's going to try and get it all done but knocks over towards the long haul already knows where he's coming from a well played plant coming out from Black Dragons and for BDS not started well. 
I think Black Dragons might be enjoying this, Des. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is what worries me about BDS. Is like I know coming into the competition, everyone was like, oh, it's probably a BDS tournament. Like, pretty much every coach I've spoken to is like, yeah, feels like it's probably a BDS tournament. But the thing is, we say it all the time. We say this every tournament, right? And I, I said it at our last one, I think, actually, back obviously in Manchester, and they came very close. So just, just shelf, just, just a step like short last time around. My concern is with BDS. If you get towards like knockout stage of tournaments, so we're not quite there yet here. But they have one-off game where, like here, they look a little bit flat to begin with. They're not quite you know, popping the way that we used to see, and they don't look quite as, uh, I don't know the word to say it, that's so, so well polished and you know, sharp on the day itself. They just seem to kind of step things back a bit, and because they aren't the team that like to get active out around the map and really try and cause bother getting aggressive on the roams, teams can bully them when they're not playing up to their best. And I think so far what you've seen is Black Dragons doing that incredibly well, even with the potential you know, Solitaire 4K to start things off, which fell, again, just one kill short. A great uh, choice of plant spot as well. Obviously, we always focus on, you know, very often focus on the kills, focus on, um, you know, where the aggression came from. But uh, just to give a bit of focus for Guto there as well, he goes in and he picks a great plant spot. It's actually really tough to defend that corner in meeting. Thank you very much. Um, it's really, if you look, it's We've actually... We've got Nova pretty... for all of our series today. They go and you, find Nova. out. It's actually <laughs> really deep if you look, that corner. It's not like just a door width. It's almost two door widths. So what's happened there is Breed here can get the smoke in, but it's not going to cover that whole area unless he swings out to the left to get the angle but as soon as he does that bang he's gonna get taken out from the cover so it was a really smart place for Guto to choose deep into the corner and understand it you know it's easy to just dash him through the door try and get the diffuser down you've still got the cover of the corner of the wall but he hasn't done he's gone far left deep into the corner to keep himself off the radar and away from the utility and it did the job as we saw yes the smart canister was deployed no it didn't do any damage it didn't do its job and a good plant from Black Dragons. They must be brought along by Nux here. He's kind of in their shield merchant too. Like he'll play a Ying, he'll play a Monty, he'll play a Blitz. There is three most played operators over the last like 10 weeks or so across stage two and here at the major. Spoke about Ask and Hornet being Deimos mains as well. Well, there's now the third player on the side that can play it as well. So really sharing the burden here. I'm not sure sure taking it in turns to have a lot of fun. Leak, in fact, just doming Guto there as he steps forward on the Finca. No more of those nano injections on side for the rest of the team here, which means no more extra HP for the rest of the round. I feel like BDS at this point just need a round where somebody like Leek, in fact, goes, you know, a little bit crazy, just gets three kills on top floor and gives them an easy win to get them into the, the second quarter of things here with a round on the board. They're holding on to top floor well at the minute. The Finkers offline, which, of course, removes some of that um, health boost as well, those extra HP that Black Dragons could have benefited from. So it's a really good first kill, to be fair. Solotov is going to be suffering the fate of the Deimos track at the minute. I don't think there's anybody in position just to challenge it at the moment but with only 41 HP I tell you what it's <gasps> not going to be difficult to take him out however I said somebody needed to step up for BDS Leaker fight finds himself a second great start to the round for him yeah picking off two of these players and really taking the sting out of the tail of Black Dragons Claws, the fiery breath, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a dragon-related joke in there somewhere. For me, though, the big thing is what I said earlier on, is we haven't really seen BDS getting out of the map and looking to be aggressive against Black Dragons. And I think part of that is because Black Dragons have approached these rounds quite slowly and very, very methodically. They've not really given room to Shiko to just breeze through two or three players, for example. And sure, they've been caught out by the odd C4, but not too much to worry about. And at this point, they're just bringing traps left, right, and center. Uses good for a second, almost a third, but does get brought down by Hornet, who's up the four and zero himself so far in the game. But I think better, and admittedly, it has been commandeered by two individual players here on BDS, where their individual brilliance is what's gotten to this point in the round where it looks like they'll walk away the winner. Yeah, and they needed it. Uh, definitely needed it. They're going to know that there's somebody inside a closet now as they hear that air jab detonate just after Hornet deployed it. But at the minute, he's just dumping a little bit of utility. Thinks there might be somebody hiding in CEO, but he knows that the race is run and that it is over. BDS are going to get that round. As I said, perfect time for them, really. They didn't want to be going with a 3 0 start. They've got themselves a successful defense. It was built by Leak of Backing Users. Both really nice passages of play from them. And I think the best thing about it in BDS terms, if you're a BDS, BDS fan is looking at that and how that round for me felt a little bit casual for BDS. It wasn't, you know, those two kills to use us. It was that flaw that we talk about where he just kind of, yep, yeah, I've hit one through the wall there. Right, I've dipped through the corner and I've got one in CEO. And it was just like, it looked easy for them. So Black Dragons, they've had a great start, but they need to make sure now that they keep the pressure on and they don't allow BDS to come back at them. For me, if I'm Black Dragons here, I want to identify anybody from BDS who is out in the map. We know that's not always too common for BDS, but if Leek in fact wants to get out in the 
map if users maybe wants to get on a roam if shaiko continues to do so black dragons should find them isolate them and take them out quickly keep that pressure on speaking of that pressure looking already towards the monty being brought along once more swapped out here at the last second and now it's kuto who gets to turn on the Deimos. so four different players have now played it never mind i'll wait until the hovers are done <laughs> it's always the way you start talking about something and they choose that's a good time to change way and pick something else instead. So cast the rule, don't talk about it till it's locked in. As it is now, it'll be the Blitz on side instead, but now Deimos does return here for Guto, who as we saw got involved in that entry scrap in the last round. Maybe more looking here to give him the tools to support on the way through. The one thing I've really enjoyed seeing is players like Meyer over on Team Liquid actually keeping the Deimos alive later into the round when there's only two or three players left because your impact then is so much more significant when there are less players around to assist the hunted, to cover for them, to kind of bait the Deimos in essentially. It makes him really, really potent. So whether or not Guto now steps back a little bit and plays a bit more conservatively remains to be seen, but I'd love to see that. Already, Shaiko's going to be dashing back down yellow stairs, looking to reposition down towards the bottom. As I said, this is what I want to see from Black Dragons. Plenty of droning. Recognise where those players are, isolate them, and get the kills if you can. If you force them back, not the end of the world, so long as you don't let them take one out on the way. Need to keep that man count up. The Blitz of Florio is potentially going to be perfect for this job. Looks like it's going to be, I was going to say, dedicated to chasing Shaiko down yellow, but instead, I think they've identified that there was somebody up on that top floor, so instead, going to be heading across. Very concerned about the potential of Capcan traps, though, and it's going to be Lee Kifaku. Could find himself in a real sticky spot here if he lets oh. this blitz, blitz close him down. He's think, I mean, having a, a little think about the window there, but he's not going to get any joy. I mean, there's a second player weighing down the bottom, ready to no. dance, and no way. Florio lost out here. They at least secured the trade, but he's lost the blitz in that situation now. to get a cap can. Doesn't really feel like a worthwhile trade. It's like trading a shiny Charizard for a basic Pikachu in Pokemon. <laughs> no, not that we'd know anything about that, guys. Everyone's obsessed. It's dangerous. <laughs> A lot of Capcan traps spotted there. I think four of them have just been seen. Um, so that's at least something for Black Dragons. We wouldn't expect them to be wandering into any of those now. Um, should be picking up at least the majority of them and clearing them out, if not all of them. Uh, but as you said, quite rightly, Des, that loss of the Blitz, if I'm looking at the utility that they've got left here, they've got Book to do a little bit of vertical, but there's only 55 seconds left to go, so there's not all the time in the world for him to do that. Not even got downstairs yet. Um, so Book's going to do a little bit of vertical. What else have they got? They can open hatches with Hibana. They've got the tracks of the Deimos, but if BDS are going to hold themselves up in sight, the tracks of the Deimos might not actually be that valuable unless Black Dragons can find a couple of kills and isolate BDS, mm. which at the minute is not looking too likely. Like I say, you get down to three players there, you're taking out a third of the team that remains with just one of those tracks, and you, just, you know where he is, you've got the direct call on him, you basically guarantee yourself a kill in that situation, as my proved against G2 yesterday. So again, I'd really like to see that being held onto a bit longer here. We've still got two tracks left in back pocket to make use of. Aski's starting his march on four, but being here inside of the frost, they at least know exactly where he is. And Shaiko's found one, Guto into another. But look at that, suddenly out of nowhere, it's four kills to BDS in the space of about three seconds, and they get the round over the line. But the Dragons needed the Blitz. Uh, they'd lost him. Florio, you know, was taken out. Leakerfact got the only kill that he needed to up on the top floor, realistically. By dropping that shield, like I said, there was no focus for the attack. There was nobody to push in behind. There was nobody to create any space. When you're going down into basement with 30 seconds left to go, up against four players from BDS, it's going to be a huge struggle because they're just going to sit there holding their angles and you know they're going to hit the shots. And that's exactly what they did. So really well played from BDS. I think they've recognised that. As soon as they've got that kill on the Blitz, as soon as that call has come through from Leakerfax saying that he's dealt with him, that's it for BDS. Decision made. Leakerfax can play his life. If he gets any more, it doesn't. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter. But we're going to stay down in sight now, and we're just going to let them try and push us. We saw. I think bottom yellow was barricaded. You know, they know they're not going to be coming from the breach that late in the round. So at this point. You know that they're coming from either kitchen door or from security. That's their only choices. Um, and BDS were well ready for it. Look at pause you can see. I think Solotov's got an issue with his keyboard or something by the looks of it. Self-diagnosing and self-resolving by the looks of it as well. Him and Lika Fat working together on that one. Job's been done. And the game can resume. So no big lengthy rehost to go through by the looks of it, which is what we love to see, Tim. 
I often have a problem with my mouse, Des. No. Usually the left button, it doesn't seem to work very well. I think it seems to like always miscalibrating, you know? Yeah, you try and swing right, it goes just way off. It seem to work. You, your bullets never land, I've seen it so many times. It's a, a constant problem that I have with Have the you mouse. tried replacing it a few times? I have, yeah. Well, it's I, I said really weird one thing. I've, I've tried changing the sense, I've tried replacing the mouse, and I just seem to continue with this problem. I mean, it obviously can't be me. Uh, you know, it must be the equipment, but... Maybe you should monitor, mate. Could be. Could be. Could try replacing the monitor Tom. or my chair. That's 240 hertz ain't enough, mate. Yeah, it could be. Get up to uh, whatever it is. What's all the kids running these days? Is it 340, 360 they running? No idea, Des. I'm running on a CRT. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hearing that is like, what's a CRT? <laughs> That's the best bit! <laughs> That's the best bit! Cathode ray tube. Yeah, the old school massive fat monitors. Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, memories, memories of school have just come rushing back. I bet. I bet. The size of some of those monitors were ridiculous. Des. I remember school before computers, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> don't show your age too much, Tim. Come on. <laughs> I, re I genuinely... We'll get back to the round, don't worry. I genuinely <laughs> remember us getting the first computer in our school. I genuinely remember that. Anyway. God, what's this thing? Why are we having to use that? Ugh. Anyway, move on. And now here we are. I'm old. Watching video How'd you do, fellow kids? kids? Yes. We'll get you a cap, Tim, and a red jacket and a skateboard later. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Right, let's get into it. It's round five. BDS, a uh, bit of a comeback trail. Lost the first two rounds, but then have looked, to be honest, super solid um, in the last two. So you're going to see the Selmas deployed on the floor to the sides of the hatches. They are, however, going to be shot impacted. away. I think that got impacted off there from the side. No, yeah, there was Solotov that's no, down no, to the no, buff. No, he was yeah. inside of Visa, and he's actually <laughs> shot it off from the side, I believe. There. No, but he used his impact to oh, okay, down here. Get the other one Solotov well. above, yeah. There was a few shots, a few impacts. I love but they've dealt with it. Um, as long as you don't get the yellow portion of the Selma touching the electricity, it will be fine, you see. So you can extend it onto the hatch um, and you can get it cleared out um, despite the KU Electrical being on there. But BDS, they were ready for that and they had a secondary plan. Love to see it. Yeah, I like that. I don't <laughs> tell you what, that's a bit of a trade coming through for freebie and surely enough. The Chico should get recovered from there. But the big thing for me is like we've seen a number of teams yesterday when they played on concert doing just that. Opening up the hatch by making use of the Salmas in that exact way. So BDS have then stacked three players nearby to make sure it actually stays denied away, which is really, really smart. Now the Ace is offline. You've only got the Thermite on side. He's now going to fall down as well. Another C4 gets tossed Skyward here as well. Surely a 1v1 gets one out here at some point. Leak it back, hitting the deck. And finished off here by Flavio Florio. Not too bad at all for the boys. In orange, almost they come into a four versus two with the plant going down and BDS are nowhere to be seen. And Art Solotov does manage to find Hornet, but the diffuser is down and things are going to get real difficult now. Shako's going down, looking, cut down at the bottom of stairs. Guto finds Solotov, and that was a really nice attack from Black Dragon. So the initial push didn't really work for them. They wanted to open the hatch just inside of Visa door, but they didn't get it done. However, it sort of came to their advantage at the end there because that meant they could leave Solotov out in the cold. Once they've got Monte into that server corridor, you saw him walk right underneath the hatch they were trying to open originally. With it closed, they don't need to worry about the flank. They don't need to worry about the hatch being dropped behind them. They just wandered on in and started taking fights inside a site. It worked out really well for Black Dragon, so good adaptation gets them a third attack. What you'd normally see there is trying to get full control of like Teller's Archives area and then push down the stairs in towards server, but they left that to BDS and said, if you guys want to use that, we're just going to hold a crossfire on. So you want to come walking down, then by all means go ahead, my friends. We really didn't need any control outside of Visa itself. And once that was in their hands, well, you saw the outcome. Really good decisive round. And this is where I think this, this game will be decided, is in the ability for the teams to move from slow to fast incredibly quickly. And that's exactly what Black Dragons did. I think BDS weren't expecting to move so quickly. It was panic stations from that point onwards of, oh my God, we've got to get back downstairs. We've got to fight over this. We've got to do that. got to do this. And although it started well for BDS, really caught asleep at the wheel there about halfway through the round. Now we get to see our Black Dragons round up the half. A 4 2 attacking half will feel pretty good if they manage to get to that point, but could BDS bounce back? Find out now. I, in my head there, I'm just kind of, you know, opposed with thought and thinking if BDS get a 3 3 here, uh, you know, is it as simple as them then coming and getting four attacks? But the, the honest truth is, I don't think it necessarily is. The problem that you've got is that you're going to have Shaiko on Deimos, and we know how deadly he is. We know how deadly that operator can be. Maya gave us a great example yesterday. Um, mm. You know, absolutely phenomenal on the Deimos and really um, did shape uh, the game against G2 with it. So, 
Yes, that is going to be a big difficulty for Black Dragons to deal with. You know, when they do get onto the defence next round, I'd expect to see, uh, you know, maybe some vigil, maybe some mute, anything they can do to try and prevent those scans being effective because they know that that's what Shaiko is going to do. But for the time being, they're going to be looking to try and secure themselves a fourth attack. And it's going to be mm. on to top floor. Already getting themselves up yellow here. This is quite good progress from Black Dragons. It feels crazy to be saying that when Consulate is our most defender-sided map so far at the Major, 65% defensive win rate like it is flying the next map is at 58 percent that is just how big the gap currently stands so at least how things sit i'm a little bit like this is looking really good for black dragons if they get this over the line they're in a very very good position going on towards their own defensive side of course bds could be a very different team on the attack two halves to a game of siege all that good stuff wait and see how it shapes up when we get there really though another play <laughs> everyone wants to have a go on demos i think poor florio feels left out here he's the only player that hasn't played the demos so far He's not going to get a go either. No. Unless it goes to overtime, maybe they'll let him have a turn then. <laughs> maybe if it's really that dominant, but I'm not convinced we'll find ourselves getting to that point. No, I don't. See how it swings back as we go through that second half, of course. But now, though, is all this work below, as you come to expect, trying to create room and massage the defenders upstairs off of sight itself. They're looking to contest. So look at this. Two players jumping around the same hole as well. They want to fight, and they've got the down as well. Tim, love that. The confidence to step back. And remember what I said earlier about the verticals really being in your favor. They've stepped back across there, control that angle, and got the kill they need. And Leaky Fat's got away for free, and it's a friend kill with the nade that is not ideal yeah the wheels have is that off. rolled downstairs and killed him is is that what's happened i think it's a day off yeah it does um so they were trying to deal with the player in behind the desk they knew that the valve was there and playing this is beautiful from bds They've another team a... kill well this is not how it's meant to go <laughs> clown music plays very loudly at the minute, the BD and BDS seems to stand for Black Dragons. <laughs> uh, Black Dragons certainly doing the job for them at the minute. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a tough round for them. Uh, like I said, they, they sent the nerd in to try and deal with the Valkyrie in behind the desk because they weren't getting it done from underneath. Um, and I've, I've got to ask questions of, of Ask really there. I don't think he's opened enough of that floor behind the desk really with the book before he lost his life. You can see the final kills come in from BDS, but all credit to BDS. They've had a good understanding of exactly how to deal with an attempted window plant. They know that the pressure is going to come from underneath. When Ask didn't open up enough of the, the back desk area, you saw the Valkyrie just playing on the cusp of it. He was just sort of stood to the side of the verticals, but not really showing himself to the angle from the window. So it was just really great positioning and great understanding from BDS. If Ask opens up another step to the side, it's probably a bit of a different story. And maybe your window player gets your first kill onto the Valkyrie and Black Dragons can get a bit of momentum in the round. But BDS, they were just playing with every single millimeter that they were given. They played really well because they went aggressive onto that block when he was down below, so we couldn't keep opening the floor up. But for yep. me, the comedy of errors was the nade that knocks through in for the execute window, yep. bounced through the hole of the floor and killed the <laughs> killed the Deimos, who was down inside of Art. And I was just like, that could not be any more unfortunate. Because obviously, your Deimos there is your, your backup buck in a way to give a little bit of vertical trip, but they've lost both of them, which then means realistically, BDS are free to play inside of sight, free to contest you. And you saw exactly how the round played out. And this is why sometimes those early kills in the round, the first or second, can actually be round deciding kills. Well, they've effectively lost two players just trying to deal with the desk player, yep. which can be done from the closet window, from art window. You don't even really need to go in there. If you've got a book, you can open up enough of the floor from below and hold an angle that they can't play in behind there realistically. So I think maybe Black Dragons have just um, fumbled it. I think they've maybe overcomplicated clearing that position. Mm. And, you know, there's no way that BDS should have been able to, to keep sort of commandeering and, and having the control over that corner of the, the room. They shouldn't have, have really needed nades going in. They should, you know, it, I, it I do want to say, I do think Black Dragons played that half quite well in terms of how slow and composed they were. They didn't really give BDS many opportunities to hit them out on the roam, for example, and in fact, oh, no. up and punish them out on the roam. So although it was slower, as we would come to expect, I do think it was quite well put together. And they've got those three attacking rounds. You're not going to complain again on a map like Consulate when it's successful for defense as it normally proves to be. Now they get to show their chops on the defensive side though and it's BDS have got to show us what they can do on the attack and Tim, to no one's surprise, guess what Shaiko's styling on. It's going to be the Deimos but it's Leaky Faku strikes first here with the Habana getting rid of Florio. Yep, they don't need a scan to know where Florio was standing. I think a little bit of drawn intel there just gives Leaky Fak everything he needs. Takes a spray through the barricade and gets the job done. We can see the boogie drone going on in and doing its work, taking out not only the uh -oh. barricade Okay, but a ton of the floor. Horner, however, manages to strafe around the corner, find his man. He's left on 8 HP, but some of that damage is done because that's all your boogie drone's gone. You know what? I admire the balls. 
to then go pushing in towards a boogie drum where you know there's going to be a round where you don't really have full knowledge and awareness of exactly where they are back outside the window or not to still go in and take that challenge is brilliant Solosov taken off on the round means that they've only got one really down that opens up that vertical flooring for them. Looking on the rest of the team, what can you really use here to get things opened up? Are you going to start chucking the Selmas on the ground or making use of the Habana X Kairos or the Deimos here? Like, Deimos can really get the job done for you, but you give him away in that spot. I really want Shaiko in these more lethal positions. So I think it's just really good to get rid of a really crucial operator in this lineup that BDS needed to get control of the downstairs. Yeah, dealing with this mirror window is going to be particularly important, and they've managed to do that by targeting the Tuberai, which just moved him away for the time being. Of course, the soft floor will allow them, um, you know, to spray through and hit that canister as well, make sure that the glass has been dropped. There might be an opportunity here. If BDS have got pipes cleared out, which I think they have, sort of yellow pillar area. No, they don't. I was going to say, if this area is clear, they can potentially get in and plant on the bomb chassis, even if somebody's playing the mirror window. It doesn't matter too much. But while somebody's on that yellow pillar, it won't happen. They need to go in there and get that. And this 3C4 still contend with those. So it's not as simple as walking in and just plant because they'll find themselves getting blown sky high as they almost found out there. Mirror taken down, still two C4s to play behind here as well. So keep an eye on when those get whipped out. But more announced about the pressure that Leaky Fat can start exerting. Can they push in towards security? And that's exactly what he's doing. Finds a second, plant's going down. But like this, they've lost a couple of players themselves. Ass left standing here. C4, no real capacity to get it out. I say that now. It comes out, but it's the invitation for the swing to come on through. And yes, BDS take the first round, as you can tell by Lee Kapak's very jubilant reaction. Really good from BDS. Uh, you know, recognize that Nux was the, the linchpin of the defense there, really. As soon as they get him cleared out, everybody is kitchen or deeper. Like you say, they've got nitros in hand, but BDS had smokes and other utility that they can put in there. It becomes a, you know, a sort of a weighted gamble at that point. You're thinking we can at least get into a spot where they're probably not going to throw the nitro. As long as we don't know, um, you know, exactly where we're planting, it should be okay. Okay, it should work out. If they do hit us with a nitro, we can send somebody else in. We've got weight of numbers now. Um, you know, they can grab it and go for a plant as well. So just a really good recognition from BDS. They get the round sorted, 4-3. It was unfortunate for Black Dragons, to be honest, because they had a decent start to the round. You know, yep, yeah, they lost uh, the opening kill, but then Hornet just, you know, getting brave, getting in there, taking the ram out with the shotgun on the close angle. Did a real job for them. Really reduced that vertical pressure that they were going to face, but it just wasn't enough in the end. And that's always going to be the problem with playing BDS. There's those moments where you just know things might not go perfectly for them, but they'll find a way. This probably won't surprise you too much as Black Dragons are actually the team that have played the most maps so far at this major. This is their 11th map that they're playing. Uh, Ask is one of our only players that's over 100 kills in total, but on this map, he's been really quiet down at three and seven. And the blessings, of course, you've got Hornet, who's been having a fab tournament as well, but he's not really the main entry for this team. That sits with Ask. Both are very, very close in terms of entry count, but Ask is the one that you tend to see getting into those more aggressive positions and looking for the early fights. And so far, he's been chewed up and scratched out nearly every single round. They're holding in there even without him performing at that level, but he really has got to find a way into this game of field. Otherwise, they're going to struggle throughout the remainder of this half. Straight up to the rooftop BDS go then. I'm going to be attacking on to the top floor to begin with. Try and get those mm. players cleared out of the admin side, I think. Uh, what what I do actually love about this, because we spoke about the ban earlier on the Deimos being the, the Deimos, sorry, the Doku being banned away. BDS are massive Dokubi merchants. Almost yeah. like I've gone out of limb here and saying away, like they rely on Dokubi to get a lot of their attacking work done. It helps them take control of ground very quickly. It helps them push through and get really aggressive onto one or two players that dare to roam against them. Without that on side, I think they're a little bit more limited. Things like the Deimos definitely help, and having the Monty on side here is going to help, and the Grim for the execute. That's all well and good, but I am curious to see throughout this half how they adapt to not having that Dokubi available to them. A little bit of a risk uh, from, I think it was the smoke of Nux there. Just He's got to stop across. 16 HP. That's it. He really does need to start three Toxic Babes in pocket as well. If he goes, they go with him. And it's going to be a huge loss of utility, especially when you can see in the distance Breeder dropping yellow with the shield. Going to try and make life as difficult and uncomfortable as possible with the Monty knows that there's a shotgun hard left. Not too much of a problem, so long as he's got his shield extended. Does have some support with him, but certainly not scared here. Black Dragon's ass man. <laughs> Shaiko, the double <laughs> Oh. Read it, dealt with the shield, and that is a brilliant passage of play from Black Dragons to clear out top yellow. How is the bot the yellow not locked down for them? They've let a player on the side of Black Dragons just sweep his way up, and they pay the price. Black Dragons now in a great position in a four versus two to get things closed out, but BDS there, I think, a little bit asleep at the wheel, and they pay the price. Just 2v1, and the Sephra player that was buying yellow by himself, and Brady could do nothing but watch on there as he got bullied off and shut down. 
a bit of overkill there, I'm afraid, Leaky Fat, but I don't think he gets much more out of this round now, unless he pulls up a wondrous shot on towards Hornet, who's dancing around these yellow stairs, waiting for him to get too close. And there's a shotgun shell with Leaky Fat's name on it. Yeah, 35 seconds left to go. It's only likely to be exit frags if Leaky Fat is able to pick up any more. Not to say that it's not possible, but it's unlikely. 1v3 becomes a 1v2, however. Florio is there waiting to take his shots over the balcony. They had themselves positioned perfectly on either side. Nice crossfire. Nothing that Lee Kapak could do about it. A BDS. Like you say, a couple of mistakes there. There's the big one being allowing that player onto bottom yellow to walk up on Shaiko. And that leaves Bride all alone. And that's it. Again, I'll give it to Black Dragon. So it was a really smart play because you had the he had Hornet also round in the corner at top yellow, knowing that realistically Bride wasn't going to drop his shield at that time to take a challenge. So they can force this two versus one, but the timing is beautiful. Like Shaiko had no idea what was coming at him. Even with the calls of the shotgun player swinging, he's swinging, he's swinging. Oh, there's someone below as well. We didn't know about that. And this is where something like a Nomad would really help there. And normally BDS are big Nomad players. They love running that operator, but as you saw just there, nothing really more to be said about it. Didn't come to help them in this case. And again, a wonderful player around top yellow from Black Dragons. Kings of top yellow in that round. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody or anything on the flank would have done. Uh, but BDS, unfortunately for them, didn't have it. 4-4, and this one continues to be a close affair. We saw a lot of overtimes yesterday, there, you and I, which is nothing new for us, it's fair to say. Uh, but it looks like we could well end up screaming towards another one in the first game of the mm. day here, uh, because there is very little to separate these two teams. Like you said, you know, coming in here, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the fans, I'm sure a lot of the players thought that this may be a tournament that was BDS's to lose, uh, you know, given recent performances, finalists at Manchester Major, but they just haven't been able to show us that cutting edge that they normally have. I feel like I'm not singling anybody out, but sort of Solitov feels so like... So you are singling been, someone out then, Tim? Solitov feels like he's been a little bit quiet, kind of... Shaiko feels like he's been a little bit quiet. And that kind of backline that mops everything up for BDS, you know, Lika goes out and gets a couple of kills, and then you've got these players inside that just kind of lock everything down. It just doesn't really feel to be, be happening that way this tournament. No, that's a concern like I mentioned earlier for BDS is like at times it just feels like they, they lack that edge at times and we know that they're super competent players it was the EU super team when it got pulled together. Solotov and News just moving over from old m and having three really great players that were on this roster for a long time for BDS coming together. The switch to the English language as well, like lots of things happen and they looked almost unstoppable. Of course as we saw back in Manchester they are plenty stoppable as Beast Coast proved but the problem for me is it's never consistent, and that is what always worries me about BDS, is do they lose form at the wrong time? The problem with the Mute Jammer being taken out there, it was grabbed by the Brava drone and then it had to be destroyed. Uh, the problem with that is it was placed to allow people to avoid Deimos tracks. Of course, looking towards Shaco playing that operator, so that's just going to make things a little bit less safe inside a site, particularly if BDS can take control of this top floor, maybe get a little bit of verticality onto Piano. It makes Hornet's position even more important here. Let's try and hold on for as long as possible. Doing a good job so far. A minute 20 left on the clock, so more than half of the round wasted by these Romas on the top floor. And BDS really in a confident position yet to start pushing sight. They might find themselves with a bit of space in there. there They've missed now. the Valk cam just above them there, I think. No, they haven't. Um, I'm seeing blue lights off to the side. Um, so, But if they can get a little bit of space, the problem they're going to have is that verticality coming down on top of them. Might just looking for a plant, they need to get rid of this vertical player and sure if they know where he is. And yet the Grim Bees coming in there really well used up on the top floor to stop that vertical being played, but it's not stopping the gunfight being forced. He's very happy to waltz with the red pings at this point and just say, you know what, I'll happily take the battle back. Even nothing over towards the other side for free. Smoke coming on through, and that could be their agency here. An attempted flank down spiral also shut down. Beat us with the numbers advantage, but can they still get this plant down? I'm not too sure. Well, that's the big question. But Black Dragons have still got top floor. Can they use it? Can they deny this plan? It doesn't look like that's going to be the case as users is able to stick it. So whilst BDS haven't played into that top floor, they've given it over to Black Dragons. They've had confidence that maybe Black yeah, Dragons just nice, wouldn't be able go. to do enough let's with go. it. And BDS were right. The gamble's paid off. There's, they've left them up there out in the cold and they've managed to just cut down Black Dragons numbers enough that they couldn't cover the entire site. They've found the space. They've got the plant down. BDS showing that sometimes a direct route to site can do the job. I love how in this game, actually, we've seen both teams adapt into what have become very common defenses for, you know, two different sites. And we had the downstairs site, for example, that electrified hatch inside a visa. 
normally opened up by an ace with two of the Selmas on the soft floor, and you contest that by having someone above, or you have players inside of Visa itself willing to contest and shoot those Selmas off. In that round there, it is so common that you see players trying to plant in that corner of like Trophy X, or whatever you want to call it, in that little spot, you're always exposed to the top floor. And the way they could they countered it was with the Grim Bees and with Smokes. So the adaptation here to what is becoming the norm on this map, I'm really enjoying seeing from both teams, to be fair. At this point for BDS, so they're the ones in the lead, and that's why attack timeout's coming for Black Dragons. They've got to figure this one out. They feel themselves that this one is starting to slip away from them. Yeah, definitely that. Uh, they know that now BDS are... They're one of those teams, they, you know, they smell a bit of blood in the water and they're going to come after you. They know that they are close and they do know how to close games out. They're going to need two more rounds. And I said it yesterday, I, I feel like BDS are one of those teams that have always got that little... They kind of keep 10% in reserve sometimes and when they really need to call on it, you'll just see them take it up a notch. And I'm wondering whether we're going to see that here in round 10 or not. Is it going to be that they just start stretching their legs now? That that last one was a really nice round for them. Black Dragons never really got close. BDS were on top in terms of numbers, kills, everything. They just walked in and started killing people inside of sight. If the confidence is up, if they're feeling like now's the time to get the job done, they've also, of course, uh, you know, by virtue of Black Dragons calling attack timeout, they have the same opportunity themselves, BDS, to have that discussion. And just watch for them up in the pace a little bit on attack here and up in the pressure on Black Dragons. If nothing else, I'm really happy to see Leakifak having a good game because I know it was only two games that we saw played yesterday, but he was the lowest rated player on BDS and it's not like him. It's again, uh, I forget who it was, called him a playmaker. You know, he's the best playmaker in the world right now. You really want to keep a close eye on him. Didn't have the best day yesterday, but sometimes players, they don't always have the best start to tournaments or the best start to uh, get, get like, games themselves overall. So I think actually having yesterday is a bit of a, I want to say a warm, it feels bad to say your official games are a warm up. Warm up wasn't really great for them, but clearly starting to warm into the game more and more as time goes by. Nox taken down by Shiko early on with the shield now following him behind two. I tell you what, that should have been a freebie, but a freebie it was not guaranteed to be. Pl Tim, they've just walked in and started planting here. There's nothing more to be said. This is what Where I are said. they? This is what I said, BDS might do, and that is get aggressive and just put the pressure on Black Dragons. That's exactly what BDS have done. We're just going to walk into sight. We'll kill anybody that's immediately in our way, and we'll put the diffuser down. You're not going to stop us, and it's BDS, as I said, just taking it up a gear, just finding that extra 10%. And right now, it's going to put them on to match point, almost certainly. Guto is going to be down on the cap can. They know that the last is above. They're watching that hatch for the drop, potentially. And with a Monty on side, there's absolutely no chance for Hornet here, realistically. He's going to come face to face with the shield. Chase down, Breed gets his second. And that is going to be BDS in rapid time, closing out that round. Such an intelligent round. We were talking about the hatch inside of Visa earlier. Solid on the Havana out there trying to get it opened up and naturally BDS sorry <laughs> just the time the BD at the start of the names is really confusing Black Dragon seeing BDS that's contesting that's so aggressively onto it earlier thought oh we'll do the same they had two or three players hanging out towards the far east side of the map trying to contest that hatch but BDS knew this they expected it and that is why 30 seconds into a round Monty is in sight and planting down with no one anywhere nearby to contest it so it was a really good bait and switch being shown by BDS there big brain play gets them up to six and four and at match point <laughs> decoy, as you say, just to draw that attention. We head then into round 11. BDS are going to get two opportunities to close this one out. I think, you know, a lot of people will have woken up this morning expecting BDS to come away with a win here. It looks like that could be the case, but Black Dragons have certainly shown us plenty throughout Consulate to show that there is rounds that they can definitely take. It's going to be up to the top floor that Black Dragons go. Not an easy sight always to hold on to. I don't think BDS will make it as easy as something like trying to go in through the window. They won't give Black Dragons the comfort of just being able to hold on to one position. They've got the Monte um, of Breed A, so we're likely to see either an admin push where he tries to move across into meeting, as we saw Black Dragons try to do on their attack of this site, or alternatively, Breed A will try to work in from top yellow. Personally, I think it'll be top yellow. They've spawned over that side. They got hit last time on the flank, but they're not going to make that mistake again. You know that they're going to have cams down there. You know Know it's going to be watched, you know they're going to be cautious for anybody moving around underneath. So they'll make sure that Shaco can properly support Breedae up at top yellow with that Monte and this try and try and bully on into sight and mm. create a little bit of pressure. I mean, yeah, they found the answer last time, right? I'm just thinking what do BDS change up here? I mean, immediately there's three on these windows ready and waiting. Recently buffed zero with six Sam Cams down back pocket. That's a lot of information. 
that you can fire over in towards site or in towards different parts of the map, of course, in this case being used in places with like a Twitch drone to try and get rid of these Goyo canisters. It's the main use case you're looking for, but the thief on losing these cameras will be the concern that they have here. They've got to find a way to get rid of the players that are actually sat inside the site itself. That's where the Grim comes online, for example, or a Buck comes in below. Leakerfax underneath now, and as soon as they get any kind of stiff as to where a player is, Guess what's coming skyward? There'll be some skeleton key shells looking for those unfortunate souls to still be inside of sight. Yeah, that's it. As soon as they can get that player moved out of the middle of CEO, they can then look at deploying that SAM cam that they particularly want to. I think they're conscious, um, you know, of any for potential further Goyo canisters to make sure they've got them cleared out. Have BDS learnt their lesson, Dead? I think they know. Question. They, they, they know. got hit on the flank last time. Ask is moving around underneath. Leakafak is there. Been spotted on a drone, there is now absolutely no excuses for BDS to get hurt by ass. I just thought like Shaiko on drone duty at this point for his team. <laughs> it shows a lot of team play when you've got your main fragger being the one who set back and sat on drones here to enable the rest of the team to get their way forwards and start marching on in. Pressure kind of being built around the site a little bit here, but Top Yellow is now in their control. League of Facts and Danita are on the window. They're starting to build up what they need, Tim, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen as we saw last time around over here, where that Monty just gets pushed super aggressively on yellow. Yeah, they've got the intel that they need. They're likely to go in Psycho's through the in win now. window when Breedé starts pushing forward here just to create that little bit of space. I think there's two stacked up on the rappel, which oh, this is cheeky. one probably goes in, but Shaco just gets away with it there. Nox just... <laughs> Little they bit, fraction of a here. second too late on popping up. But like you say, that's the big problem is BDS are unaware of his position. 30 seconds left to go. It's going to have to be go time for BDS oh, soon. They've bailed. They've changed their mind. So now we've had the Monty leave top yellow and has moved away entirely. But Leak Facts found his one. He's breathing this on the window with them here, I believe, on the Monty. In fact, they're going up towards the roof as well. So he'll go back towards yellow again here. That kill has unlocked the round form. They feel getting rid of the Goyo, taking away the Knight. In fact, no, but the impacts on the back pocket that have been removed here. Knocks in fine Shaiko as well. But look at this. They're losing players everywhere, Tim. Decimated. It thought for a second it looked like they might be able to get something off this, but it's simply not to be. Solotov's in and trying to take a fart towards Guto, but he'll get away with absolutely nothing. Leak of finds himself for 3k. There's no time left in the round. That was a really good defense from Black Dragons there. Very um, patient. BDS have kind of thrown everything at them. They've had pressure top yellow. They've had players on windows. They've had Grims going in. They've used the SAM cams to clear out the utility. BDS have kind of done everything that they should have done, everything that they needed to do to try and clear out that plant spot inside of the window. But ultimately, Black Dragons have just been so resilient to it. They've constantly been able to keep having an impact on that space. We saw even at the end the Toxic Babe canisters still going into that position. They were able to fend off the Monte to prevent Shaiko pushing round on the Deimos. Nux just holding it down on top yellow. Really, really solid stuff from Black Dragons. Great C4 sailing over the top. The crazy thing is it's a 1v1 here at the end, by the way, it's worth stating. It's more down to the top than anything else because BDS, I think, got a little bit held up. But when you're against the Tubera, when you're against the Smoke, when you're against the Goyo, Wasting time is what they're going to do. And it comes back again to what I spoke about earlier in the Dokubi ban. That is what BDS use so often to overwhelm and push in and get aggressive and use that noise of the phone calls to make plays happen. Without that on side, I'm not saying they're failing, absolutely not. They're still at match point. They've done great. But you can see how Black Dragons are trying to play into that weakness a little bit here of a slower BDS slider. And that they're already not particularly like the quickest team in the world. But because of that little bit slower, really trying to abuse that more by playing these stall operators is a really good way of approaching it. BDS with one final chance here to avoid going to overtime again. They had it against W7M yesterday. They lost 8-7 in the end on border. Did go on to win their second game. I mean, fun fact about both of these, team, these teams, Tim, is they both played the same opponents. They both played against D+, and both played against W7M, of course, at different times and in different orders, but both have ended up being one-on-one, -on -one, which is how we find ourselves here. And if you aren't sure what it means without the whole one-on-one -on -one thing, if you win from this, you go up to two and one, you're then into a best of three promotion game, in which case you make it to main stage. If you lose, you go to being one and two in your score, which then means you're in elimination games. You have to then win two best of threes if you still want to make it to the main stage. And those best of threes kick off in about two matches time. So when we get there, things really start to get spicy. Yep, three is certainly the magic number, There's Three wins and you're through, three losses and you're out. Simple as that, can't make it any easier for you. Now then, last time around, when they were defending this site, Black Dragons were pretty much allowed by BDS to hold on to the top floor. BDS went direct in towards site, just got enough kills that it, there was too much ground for Black Dragons to cover from the verticals, so BDS were able to get a plant down. Black Dragons, again, and I think quite rightly, have gone for that top floor hold. They've got the verticals open, and that is what they're
they are relying on to prevent a plant inside of site. It doesn't look this time like BDS think they're going to get away with that route one into site. They know they're going to have to do something about the top floor this time. I like that from Solitaire. Oh, sends the line. nade, uses the noise to disguise his jumping through the window. Oh, no. What a reaction. Nox misses his shots and Solitov with a fraction of health left gets the job done. Five versus three and BDS might just be on their way, Des. It's unfortunate as well, Bride has gone down. He'd won that one versus one at the top of yellow and got down, I want to say, from below, maybe through the hatchet from Guto on the vigil. But he'll be recovered. They can still go on and press this. They've got all five players up, even if two are on a bullet from death. That's still enough. They've got all the tools to work with. They've still got two Deimos tracks to play behind as well. If BDS lose this one, it's going to feel like an absolute disaster. Ask is just going to be circling around at long desk here, looking to see if he finds somebody. And he does. He knew that they were on spiral. Picks yeah. up Leaker back and then just slips away back in HP. towards meeting. But this is what BDS can do now. If five versus three becomes four versus two as they can just oh, play Solitov. the trade game. Solitov finds Ask. Shaiko with the last. And BDS it will be heading on to two wins, one loss. They will go to the promotion match, to the match that might take them to the main stage whereas black dragons they're going to be fighting for their lives I don't believe they'll play until tomorrow bds so for them that's the day done nice and early whereas for black dragons same sort of story but it's going to be a pretty tentative affair there are no more second chances now and i think we can't really ignore actually